Uh, welcome to day three, marathon three completed of the seven in seven challenge. Uh, my name is Phil Daly. I'm the head of medium PR at Leeds Rhinos. Uh, delighted to be joined on today's call for uh, with Ian Gardner and Jen Dodd from the MND Association. Uh, we've got Danny Horn from Sills and who's a big supporter of uh, the MND Association. And uh, we've got Stephen Naylor, who's from the Nick Smith Foundation. We'll find out some more about that later on, a cause that uh, is very close to, to Kev's heart and, and, uh, and the association with MND. And of course, we're delighted to be joined by Rob Burrow from home and uh, his dad, Jeff's with him today. And uh, we're delighted to see you both there. Uh, and we'll, uh, we'll, um, we'll, we'll crack on with the show. So we'll start, as we always do, with uh, a, a recap of the day's marathon. Uh, Kev, uh, how was it? Very good. Very good. Um, yeah, I woke up this morning, could tell I'd certainly uh, done a bit yesterday, so um, wet, but loads better than yesterday. Yesterday were grey and miserable and just sort of a bit too old of me, uh, if I'm honest, but today was um, was good. Um, didn't set out too quick, just tried to, to get out nice and steady and not try and preserve ourselves but just be a bit smarter because I don't think we've been disciplined enough the last two days uh, and lo and behold we're going to get our fastest time today so um, yeah I, you work that one out I don't know uh, I, I pretty much guarantee we'll be a little bit slower tomorrow because I just reckon the, the natural churn of being tired and, and setting out but having said that who knows I, I think what was really I mentioned this yesterday. What's really spurred us on and, and buoyed us is, you know, getting the regular updates of, of where the fundraising um, total is at. Because every time we hear it's jumped up again, um, you just get another burst of energy. So um, that's been brilliant. The support's been outstanding, as you know, uh, from everywhere. Uh, and the messages that are being sent to the club or through the fundraising account for Rob. Um, I've been lovely. They've been really, really kind and, and respectful. And to see all that just just spurs us all on. You know, we've got an incredible team who are who are out every morning and and who have been really supportive of me. But uh, they're making it so much easier. And for them to see all those messages and, and scrolling down on that fundraising, that just giving page and see some of the messages that are on there about Rob um, have been brilliant. So um, like I said yesterday, it's an absolute honour to wear the number seven on my back because it means a lot to me because of Rob, uh, but also to wear the MND Association vest is really special. So I did say it yesterday, I'm going to say it again. You combine those two and it's a very, very powerful vest to wear and you almost feel like Superman when you've got it on. So um, I'm actually looking forward to tomorrow. Um, I am still shivering now from this morning. I think some of that is jumping in a nice bath for 20 minutes. Probably not, not helped, but um, yeah, thanks for all your support, everybody. You mentioned the team there, uh, Kev, who's supporting. I thought it'd be nice to, to go through and just explain a bit about the about the guys because they're um, they they're in, in each 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 case they they're doing their own challenge out there uh, to support you. Yeah, so um, obviously we'll start with you, Phil. Um, and as we mentioned, I can't. I'm losing track of days. I don't know if it was Tuesday, or Wednesday, but. Um, Phil's very close to Rob. Phil's been uh, Rob's media manager at the club for, well, ever since Rob started to play back in 99, it'd be. Um, he was my first media manager. Um, we've all got an unbelievable friendship with him as well. He's been through all the good times and the bad times with us. Um, he knows us inside out. And, um, you know, when we first started to throw this idea about, um, Phil was the, the first person I, I mentioned it, to and, and grabbed all of it and just led and helped put all the logistics together. Um, all the sort of media stuff we've had, all BBC's involvement has been down to Phil and we wouldn't have got anywhere near the fundraising amount if it weren't for Phil doing everything he's done. He's, he's got across here every morning, bang on six o'clock. So he's left home at quarter to five and, and just the work he's done throughout the day has been unbelievable. So I have no doubt, Phil, without you being involved, we wouldn't have got anywhere near where we are financially, that's very think, kind of um, say that. Yeah. We we won't Phil, we we wouldn't at all, and and um, I know Rob is absolutely overwhelmed by um, the funds that have been raised, but also the support. But I know that his friendship with you is really important to him as well. So to have you involved 
and for me to have you involved is, is really, really good. So that's Phil, who's done a wonderful job. Um, a good mate of mine, Chris Stevenson, who uh, I first met when he was at, at Canterbury. He was a CEO at Canterbury. So it was like through rugby I met him. Um, he, it's his fault. I actually enjoy marathon running now. So he's got a lot to answer for. But um, I mentioned it to Chris when we started to run with this about five weeks ago and straight away said, can I do it with you? I, I want to be a part of it. Um, I think it'd be a really special thing to do, a really nice thing to do, and, and I'd love to do it. And, you know, he's rocked up the last three mornings. He's, he's 10 years older than me, and he's absolutely smashed it. He's done brilliantly. Um, to have somebody out there running with you and going through exactly the same strain has, has been fantastic. And he and he's, yeah, he has. He's been awesome. And um, alongside Chris was um, a guy called David Spencer, who's another good mate of mine. He just lives around the corner and um, he's actually started running properly this year. So he's run a couple of marathons and straight away he said, I'm in, I'm up for a challenge. But sadly, he got a calf injury two weeks ago and he, and he's tried about four times to go out and run since then and, and broken down. But it's remar he's remarkable because he's, he's absolutely done the challenge and he's got up the last three mornings at 4 a.m. And he's walked a full marathon and he's been on the finish line when we've got back. And um, an absolute warrior. He's he's really pushed the fundraising through his contacts and been brilliant. He's a good mate. And we saw, because of the routes we've done and the loops, we've we've gone, uh, we've passed him a couple of times whilst he's been walking and he's, he looks freezing. He, his face is all white. He looks tired, but he's just cracked on and done it. And he's been awesome. And then we've got two guys on the bike. Um, Daryl Rogers, who's been a great friend for a long time, and um, our two L, well, my eldest son, his youngest son, um, a real good mate, to play rugby together. And, and I've known Daryl for probably 30, 25, 30 years. Um, become really good mates him over the last, I don't know, maybe 10 years. And um, I think every local marathon I've done or everything I've trained for around here, running wise, Daryl's been alongside me on his bike and provided support, always had the gels and the drinks. He makes me laugh. He does a great Elvis impersonation. Um, he's just really good fun, you know, and because he, he knows me so well, he, he knows what buttons to press as well. Um, he fired me up a couple of times today, actually, um, which probably meant we went a little bit quicker than what we should have done, but um, he's been brilliant. And then the last one on the bike has been Phil Allegan, who, I've only got to know this last probably six months. He's a really good friend of David's, who David was going to run. David's now got injured and, and doing the walks. And he stepped in and, and has provided that extra support, similar to what Daryl does for me, but he's providing that to Chris. And we're just, there's just a real camaraderie, you know, being back in a team again with, I, I know everybody in there really well. Probably the only one who I don't know really well is Phil. And I actually feel like, when you get thrust into something like this together, you find out very quickly about people and we couldn't have a better dynamic between us. The group is really good and um, it has, it, I've, it's been a really, really enjoyable three days. It, it has and, and um, long may that continue. Sorry for rambling on there. <laughs> <laughs> and a special mention for Daryl today in particular because he was... Uh, he, he 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 really felt for Dave and the fact that he was getting up at this morning. And this, this morning he got up at, at four a.m. and walked half half the marathon with with Dave, and then got on the bike and rode the whole thing with, with you. Incredible effort by Daryl. Yeah, it was. Yeah, he's it, that's that's what he's like. He's he's got an out of gold. Um, the old the old group are just like so so selfless when you when you think about they've all took a week off work. Um, and throwing myself at this and uh, out soft to all of them. Um, I have told them a number of times what we're doing is unbelievably special and um, we will all remember it for the rest of our lives because it is for a very, very special man who's, who's on here today, but also for a very, very special charity as well that's doing some wonderful things. And that uh, takes us nicely on to the m and Association, and um, we heard from Jen yesterday. Ian, it's uh, it's great the, the, the awareness that's being raised for the m and Association. 
Yeah, it is absolutely fantastic. We have been blown away and you know the efforts of Kevin and he's just said there, the team around him, including you, Phil, and everybody else who's um, who's been involved is just incredible. And obviously a huge thank you to everybody who's sponsoring Kevin, who's making these donations. The com combination of awareness raising and the fundraising really is making a huge difference to the fight against MND. It's making a huge difference, as I've said before, to other families who are on a MND journey themselves themselves to know that more and more people understand what they're facing every single day and knowing that the funds can now be used to improve care, raise further awareness and, and fund research to develop effective treatments, hopefully in the very near future. And the fact that such a such a high profile fundraising event is taking place, that, that has ripple effects that other people want to, to do their own fundraising event. And we'll, we'll speak to a couple of guys who, who've done just that uh, later on. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. Again, um, you know, people people such as Kevin, who, who, who are literally going the extra mile, inspires other people to want to go out to do their own thing, whether it's a run, a bike ride, a walk, a cake sale, a, a fancy dress day at work, whatever it happens to be, all of that combined effort makes the, 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 the team fighting MND that much bigger, that much stronger, and therefore the impact of everything they're doing collectively that much, that much greater. And um, one of those people, Danny Horn, uh, Danny, you've, you've done a fundraiser. You had a fundraising walk postponed uh, that was inspired by Robin. You did it in memory of, of your brother-in-law uh, and Sills and Storm founder, Phil Stevenson. Um, but you're, you're looking to, to raise that money for M MND, Danny? Yeah, uh, gutted to, uh, to have to postpone it twice now. But, uh, you know, we've got to uh, stick to the lockdown rules. Um, and... Uh, It'd have been all right. I started it as a little thing. Uh, I just put it on to try and raise a bit of brass and 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 throw it into fund, and it's it's gone a bit crazy to be fair. So we've got a load doing it, and we just can't do it with the amount of people that want to do it. So we'll just have to wait till lockdown's properly over, and then uh, we'll we'll do the walk from Silsden Storm that uh, my brother-in-law Phil, who we lost to MND, uh, he set up. You know, he, he uh, rejuvenated rugby in Silsden again. And um, and we're going to walk to Leeds to to market for Rob, um, and just try and you know join the forces and uh, raise a bit of cash for this absolutely amazing charity. And Kev's obviously spoken about you know the inspiration that, that Rob is for for him every day, and and that not and clear from what you're saying there that your memories of Phil is what's in, inspiring you to to get involved. Yeah, I mean, Kev's doing you know, you can't you can't put into words what he's doing and. Uh, you know, Rob, Rob's his, his inspiration and is also everybody's inspiration. But uh, yeah, personally, Phil, when when I signed for Keith Le Cougars, I were a, just a little lad from uh, Silsden and Phil sort of took me under his wing and and helped me uh, get into the team and, and get sorted training and stuff like that. And uh, obviously, we and being part of family, uh, you know, it's it's a great way to remember him and uh, and a great way to, to raise awareness for uh, MNDA. And we've also got John Meehan uh, on on the line now. John, uh, you know you know Kev well. Yeah, we shared a few drinks. Um, we know Kev well. Yeah, how you doing, mate? You looking you looking amazing. Thank you. you time you... again today. I just built. I've just been so unbelievable. Oh, thank you, John. Um, yeah, do you looking remarkable as well? Do, do you know John <laughs> is the best dressed man I know. <laughs> Not there. Aren't this is this is my fat fat down. Back down lockdown. It's, uh, <laughs> six months of being working from home now. It's, uh, oh, it's I think it's longer than that. It's mental. Uh, but yeah, uh, Kev, um, we, when when I did my uh, charity event, I was planning to do the Great North Run. Strangely enough, Kev, Kev doing his first marathon had inspired me to get my, uh, my running shoes back on. And then we got locked down. I thought, well, uh, what what can we do? Something different. And uh, it's interesting. I was just having a few jokes at work, and somebody said, "Why don't you shave your hair off?" And I'm like. Stop it off, you know. My, my locks are everything, uh, particularly when you get to my age. Um, and it just kind of gave momentum. Before I knew it, I'm uh, I'm shaving it off and I'm and I'm bleaching it blonde for some reason. Um, I thought I thought I was 16 again. I'd never done anything like that before. Um, but what I couldn't believe was the amount of money that was just coming through. It was just uh, unreal. Um, and we ended up raising over five thousand pounds. I think I put like. Like Kev, you know, you put a you put a target on there. You think, well, if I get to it, I'll be delighted. Um, but when you, you you go smacking through it, and, and you think 
wow, this is just, um, it's unbelievable. And, 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 you know, at the time, the, the Rob news had come out, you know, people had certainly jumped on, people were locked down. And uh, I, I guess people found, found it at that time just to be a bit more charitable. Um, and, you know, all for a great cause. Yeah, and we've heard all week from the MD Association how um, grateful they are for for those funds, but how it how it funds research that hopefully you know we'll get to a point where we can, we can end MND and and the horrors that we've heard and the, and, the, and the terrible tales we've heard will, will be a, a thing of history in in, in terms of in, inspiring your uh, your fundraising. Uh, what was what was your motivation? Um, we've got a friend who suffers with it and he's had it for 11 years and um, you know I'd never heard of it before and I, I re recall the day that we found out and somebody that was with my uncle and he said um, Don Revy had it and I was like I've never heard of it that, that just um, and I kind of that I, I also had that in the back of my mind because I've done quite a few events over the years and raised quite a lot of money for, for, for different charities for different reasons and um, I always thought, I always thought we'd do something for for Tony, one of our friends. Um, so I, I guess when, when we heard the, the news about Rob, um, it just kind of inspired me. And, and what Kev had done with the, with the marathon, I thought, you know, I need to do something really. Uh, I've done. I'm, I'm, I'm quite a big cyclist. I've um, I've cycled end to end. Uh, you know, Land's End to Johnny Grown uh, Goats. I've, I've done that. We did that over ten days with uh, with my old company Jurek. Um, so yeah, we've done quite a bit, and I just thought I want to do something a little bit different. So, and that's why I ended up doing doing a silly a silly event at the time. So it would have been the more sporting related, but it, because of lockdown, we couldn't do that. <laughs> Very good. Well, if you're if you're a man who prizes your locks, it's a hell of a sacrifice. Go back. It needs going again. <laughs> no, don't get any that. ideas anyone don't get any ideas <laughs> <laughs> I did notice there was a queue, queue outside the barbers as, uh, in Upper Mill as you were running past today Kev so it'll, uh, an, an active market there yeah both, both my two are booked in this afternoon actually <laughs> yeah. the, the, the realities of lockdown life yeah uh, Jen in terms of we obviously had two great tales there in terms of people wanting to, to do fundraising for M&D Association. I uh, presume there's lots of opportunities for them to do that. Yes, there's lots of opportunities to get involved. We've got some festive fundraising ideas. And there's lots of people putting on their running shoes this weekend who um, have no doubt will be inspired by what they've seen from Kev. But this weekend, they'll be putting on their Santa suits and going for a run. So you never know. You might see some Santa runners on your run on Sunday morning, Kev. Um, but there's lots of ways to get involved. It doesn't have to be with running. It could be baking. Um, we've got lots of different virtual things that have been sort of inspired by lockdown. And then if you are brave enough, there is there is the head shave like John did. Um, I'm glad to see your hair's grown back. I know it was your pride and joy. So I'm glad to see it's grown back quickly. <laughs> I quite liked it. I wanted to say that the, uh, the wife wasn't impressed. It was, a, it was a sorrow of four months till it grew back properly. And uh, the, the, obviously, Kev, we spoke, spoke about M and D, and and John saying there how how a, a friend was. That's when he first sort of came in touch with it. Someone you had an experience of M and D before before Rob with a, a former teammate of yours in the academy, uh, Nick Smith, and we're delighted that Stephen Naylor from Nick Smith's Foundation here. Kev, do you want to tell everyone a bit bit about Nick? Yeah, I can do. Yeah, I think first of all, it's probably worth saying to to Danny. Actually, Danny, uh, my older brother Ian played with Phil Stevenson, so. In the game that took place just before um, Phil passed away, uh, my older brother Ian was there and he, he thought a great deal about Phil. So, huge respect. Um, I think what you're doing is incredible. So, good on you. Yes, um, thanks very much. No problem. With, with Stephen, um, obviously, it's great to see you, Stephen. I know we've been in regular contact, haven't we, via text, and, and um, you know, we've had a few phone calls, especially uh, over the last 11 months, but in particular, uh, when I was in the academy and I was coming through, um, there was a guy I played with uh, who was an incredible talent from Siddle, um, a guy called Nick Smith. And um, Stephen can probably tell you the story a lot better than I can, but, um, you know, Stephen got diagnosed with MND and, and sadly passed away not long afterwards. But um, I just think the legacy he has left, what he did, um, especially at Siddle, 
Um, he's incredible, but he left a mark on every one of that academy team that, that I played in. And, um, you know, he, he didn't go on and sign and sign pro at the Rhinos. He could have done. He was good enough. He was a top player, but he was a brilliant lad and all. And I, I think that's what you find about rugby lads. There's not many bad ones. They're all pretty genuine and good and, and, and care for each other. And, and Nick certainly was one of those. And he, he's got a lovely family. And, um, you know, Stephen, you, you can probably tell the rest if, if that's all right. Yeah, of course. Yeah, thank you. Um, I mean, it was September 2017 when Andy sort of crashed into our lives. And like other people have said, we knew the we knew the initials, knew the acronym, didn't really know much about the disease or what it was. But then Nick, who's been not feeling great, you know, couldn't lift as much as he used to in the gym, uh, but, you know, didn't think anything of it. Sort of had gone to the doctors a few times and then... On that September afternoon, Saturday afternoon um, in 2017, uh, he got the diagnosis that he had MND. And, you know, it's a shattering diagnosis. That it's a horrific moment. I'm married to Nick's sister, Helen. And uh, you can imagine for, for his sister, for his mum, for his wife, Rachel, for all of the family, it's just one of those moments where that you'll never forget. Um, and Nick... Um, deteriorated quite rapidly um it's one of those diseases where you don't quite know sort of how it's going to progress nick's progressed rapidly and it was just 101 days later so almost exactly three years ago that nick died um and you know two young children um georgia who was two at the time hayden five you know and it's just one of those moments where you can't comprehend sort of what's happening makes no sense you're angry you're in grief and uh, yeah it's just one of those horrific moments and a horrific period as well even though it was short 101 days you know Nick uh, sort of uh, really you know struggled and everyone around him struggled as well to know how to deal with it um, and it's just it's the cruelest of diseases and the fact that you know we can now um, do something to try and help hopefully collectively, um, really keeps us going. And that's why we sort of decided to set up the charity, the Nick Smith Foundation, just within a few months after Nick died, because myself and Rachel, Nick's wife, were just determined that he would have a sort of lasting legacy. And, you know, as Kev has said, you know, as everyone said, the Rugby League family is an incredible family. And all of Nick's teammates from the, you know, 400 odd games he started at Siddle, um, have been there for us every step of the way. And we wanted to both raise funds uh, to support the efforts of research into MND. Uh, we wanted to help children who'd been bereaved at a young age, because obviously when you're five and two, how do you explain to them uh, sort of what's happened and what's gonna happen to them? And it's one of those cruel twists of fate that um, my wife, Helen and Nick, um, they lost their dads at exactly the same age when he was 38. Um, so they obviously had experience of losing a parent at a young age as well. So we wanted to try and help them, and we've done things to do that. I'm proud to say some of them working with the MND Association on lots of exciting projects, but including something called treasure and memory boxes, where uh, memories can be captured and stored for the future, and that's something we're really proud of. Uh, but the other element we, we've tried to promote is rugby league itself because Nick was passionate about rugby league as Rob is as Kev is and you know it was so much a part of his life that we wanted to somehow you know ensure that young people have the opportunity to take it up and then the opportunity to keep playing that sport whether at an amateur level whether for fun whether hopefully and professionally in the future and so we've done things to try and support that as well so all three strands which we hope Nick would be incredibly proud that we've taken up in his name and, you know, hopefully have made a real difference. And you mentioned there, presumably a great inspiration for you and, and great encouragement to carry on doing it is, is to create that legacy to try and, you know, fund that research and, and help make sure that this doesn't happen again in, in the future. Yeah, absolutely. And the, the generosity of everybody, as we've, as we've been seeing this week, is just incredible. You know, in our first year... We sort of have you have no clue when you set up a charity how much you're going to raise. But in the first year, 
um, we managed to raise enough to donate £50,000 to um, the MND uh, Centre in Sheffield, Citran, who are doing amazing research work. And, you know, that money has gone directly to be invested in a piece of machinery that's allowing them to do more research, more testing, hopefully to develop um, treatments and one day sort of, you know, mean that we can wipe out this disease. And I think it's been really important that we've tried to connect people with where their money is going as well so uh, things like that uh, and things like the sort of memory boxes um, are things which you know people have that tangible link between the money they're giving in Nick's name and sort of the legacy that he's able to leave. And from what Kev said there Nick uh, obviously was was a great guy to, to know tell us a bit about Nick uh, himself and and your time with him. Yeah, so, I mean, I've known Nick for a long time because I met Helen, his sister, uh, my wife now, when we were both 11. So obviously Nick was, he was quite, you know, quite a formidable bloke to have as a uh, potential brother-in-law and then brother-in-law. <laughs> he, was, he was one of the fittest guys I knew, sort of, who was this sort of legend on the rugby pitch. Um, you know, he wasn't someone you ever wanted to cross or upset his sister. And obviously, given the sort of situation they faced of losing their dad, Nick was such a a pivotal role in the family, you know, at our wedding, he gave Helen away. Um, you know, him and Helen and his mum, Viv, are an incredibly tight-knit uh, trio and sort of having to go through all of that um, was just horrendous. But as you know, he was, he was at Siddle for so long, sort of, you know, from, from being at the, you know, Rhinos Academy back in 98, you know, he was at Siddle then, Siddle as a youngster, still at settle up until the point he was sort of diagnosed and it becomes so much a part of your life and sort of all of the guys there um have been so supportive and um you know want to ensure that you know nick's legacy goes on as well and i think it really shows the sort of the the camaraderie the, the family the nature of uh, this sport sort of it you know we're seeing that so much this week as well and the siddle club you know mentioned a fantastic club still producing Top quality players, Tom Holroyd, who's who's in the Rhinos first at the moment. There's a lot in the in the academy as well, so uh, it's great to see that they're they're so heavily involved in in cherishing Nick's legacy. Yeah, and one of the things you know, Siddle's got such a great pedigree of developing these players, and one of the things we've done every year since we started the charity is a wholesome thing we call the Smudger Under Sevens. Nick, known as Smudger at Siddle, of course. And that's where we try and get under seven clubs from across Yorkshire together for a day. Uh, to give them a chance of playing against each other, learning tips, tricks. Um, and obviously, we weren't able to do that in person this year, um, but we gathered together uh, lots of uh, stars of the sport, including Kev, to sort of talk about, you know, their, their, their tips and tricks that they wanted to pass on. And um, it's been great to be able to do that. It's sort of, you get hundreds of young players together. You know, they love the opportunity of playing against all these other teams. And... It's just a brilliant sort of, you know, you know, looking back and seeing that tournament going on on the, on the fields up at Siddle is just sort of a, a sort of a brilliant thing. You sort of think, you know, Nick would be looking at that and think, wow, it's amazing that that's happening sort of in my name. Fantastic. And I'm sure you'll join all of us. Looking forward to 2021 when we can get kids back out on fields and playing sport and, and enjoying themselves again. Yeah, definitely. And it's sort of lots of, you know, Siddle sort of having one of the new pitches installed as well, part of the World Cup legacy. Um, so, you know, great things happening up there and sort of, you know, with the likes of, you know, Tom Holroyd and sort of Morgan Smithies and everything, you know, you know, doing so well in the game at the moment. It's, um, it's a, you know, lots of exciting times to come at the club there. Fantastic, Stephen. It's great to hear about the Nick Smith Foundation. Uh, Kev, we'll just look ahead to... Um... To tomorrow, it's the, the last run in Saddleworth out of this block before we head to Leeds. Uh, what, are you, what are your thoughts about Marathon 4? I guarantee one thing, it's been cold and wet. <laughs> uh, now, lo looking forward to it, I think um, I, I haven't gone into any of these with any dread at all. Um, you know, every, every morning when I get up and the guys are together and the banter starts, it is, you're back, you're back in a rugby team. And... Um, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. In, in my own mind, it's sort of, we get tomorrow done, we're over halfway. Uh, and then we have two brilliant days to look forward to coming back to Leeds, which would be great. And, you know, to get to run 
in Leeds, which I've only ever done once before, which were a Leeds 10K back in 2016, or I think it was 2016. Um, to be able to do it again uh, in very, very different circumstances, but um, it'd be really nice to see some familiar friends, uh, some familiar faces. Um, it'll be great. It'll be great. Really looking forward to it. And then the last one, I'm pretty sure will take care of itself. Uh, when we come back here on Monday and, and you know, hopefully finish what, what will have been an incredible week. So um, I can't thank people enough for everything they've done um, so far. The support, like I said, has been immense. It's great to have Rob and Jeff on here today. Um, Rob, your texts on a night have been absolutely brilliant. So thank you. And um, I'll tell you now, every time I hear from you, it you absolutely inspire me and you are in my thoughts every time I run. So, honestly, mate, you've been absolute, an absolute star. So, thank you. Uh, we've got some uh, some questions for you uh, from uh, using the hashtag run Kevin run. Uh, one from Richard Stockdale, uh, somebody Rob knows very well, a big supporter of our, our academy team. He says, uh, who's your favourite Harry Potter character? And this is quite a loaded question because we know a Harry Potter character personally, don't we? We do. Do, do. do you know what? This is a loaded question, Phil. Is it? This is a loaded question because Richard Stockdale is an absolute legend in Leeds. Rob will agree with me. Um, and I'll tell you why he's asked this question because at a recent reserves game, I say recent, just before lockdown, he was there in a big court and from the back, he looked like Hagrid. So I'm gonna to have to say it's Hagrid. Yeah. Just because I like Richard. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll just hope that Matthew doesn't see this. <laughs> uh, um, question from Andy Nelson. Uh, he's obviously been impressed by your uh, your marathon time so far. He said uh, he said you know your PB was back in March uh, when you did the uh, the solar one at three hours eighteen. Um, are you more marathon fit for this challenge? If so, if you went out for a single marathon, so not, not the seven in, in seven, do you think you could break three hours? Uh, easy answer, no. I don't <laughs> think I could. No. And, and actually, I did... Um, I'm trying to think when I ran. Probably May. When we're in deepest, darkest lockdown, I challenged myself to run at least a 10K every day. Um and I came out of that and I felt great. And I actually ran a 3.13. Um, but I, I reckon to get below three hours, I'd have to run every day and probably lose 15 kilos, which I, I don't want to do. I'm freezing as it is at the minute, so I don't want to make myself <laughs> even more cold uh, being out there. So, um, Question from Claire Naylor. Other than what you're doing now, what's your most memorable achievement with Leeds Rhinos? It's fitting that on the, the anniversary of your... Captain C, that we look back on that. What's your most memorable achievement? Uh, probably the, the last one, 2015, getting the treble. Um, brilliant team. Um, Rob was right in the thick of that. A crucial part of, of the trophies we won during that time. But it was just a brilliant ending. I know Rob got a similar ending in 2017. Um, I'm sure he feels just as fortunate as I did. But that team in 15 was as you know, as good as any I've played in. And throughout that time, throughout those 19 years I played there, um, we had some wonderful players we've got great friendships with now, but that 15 team was, you know, to win a treble and, and get to leave on your own terms um, at Old Trafford was brilliant. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, when you think back now, especially for you guys, for you, JP and Kylie, and then for Rob and Danny two years later, to, to for your final game, for, for the club to be to be as a champion, I mean, we saw last week how much it meant to to Jammer when he did it with with St. Helens. It, that's the that's the, the the dream come true stuff, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. And and that was you know what what I thought of at, at weekend when you think you know you got two champions in Sean O'Loughlin and James Graham retiring at weekend, and you know one of them's sadly going to have to be a loser. Um, it, it certainly does make you reflect a little bit and. Yeah. remind you just how lucky that myself, Rob, Danny, JP and Kylie were because um, they didn't get any better than that. And just um, just wrapping things up, Kev, um, in terms of uh, in terms of looking ahead to, to Leeds, you're looking forward to 
to, to coming back home, you, you mentioned earlier on when we spoke that Oldham's your town, but uh, Leeds is your city. Very much so, very much. Um, I, I think we're probably ready for a change of location anyway, but I, I couldn't think of another better place to run. Um, to see Edinley, um, the, there's some parts in the city that, you know, as a team, we've had some really good moments. So we'll get to run near some of those. Um, I do know that we're going to be running near Rob's new mural. Um, that'll be up. So really looking forward to seeing that. I think it'll inspire us again. Um, but yeah, I can't wait to be in Leeds. I just think, and I know the weather's going to be kinder as well. <laughs> it's going to, have to be guaranteed that now, isn't it? Yes. Very good. Right. Well, thank you to everyone for, for coming. It's been some incredibly inspiring uh, stories there. I'm sure uh, when Kev's out on the roads tomorrow, um, he'll be he'll be thinking of those. You've played you've played a key part in in helping uh, this this keep going. Uh, thank you to everyone who's donated. Uh, I can tell you from from seeing the guys when they're out running, it means the world to them uh, when they keep seeing that figure. I know Kev said that when that figure going up. So please do keep do donating, keep spreading the words. Um, you know, tell your friends, tell your work colleagues, um, uh, get everyone involved and, and let, let's, let's keep that figure going up, up and up and we'll see where we get to come Monday.